Hello, everyone. Uh, it looks like we are live right now. Let me know. Uh, let me know if you can hear me well and you can see me well. Uh, Alan Zibelman thinks there are more layers uh, underneath uh, the Wallenbergs, probably. Yeah, and I think George Soros is just like a, a front man. He's not really important in the uh, scheme of things. Uh, interesting that Ricard pointed that out. Uh, we're going to be talking about uh, Weimar Germany. Uh, we, we mentioned Weimar hyperinflation, but a lot of times we don't look at the origins of it. You know, we got to look before the Weimar Republic and, and why I think uh, it's concerning that we are in the same kind of environment right now. All the symptoms are there. Um, so we're going to look look into that. We're going to look at a few other things and uh, I'll take questions as well. Uh, I am as er uh, early as as usual, a little earlier. So we'll just uh, greet everyone. We've got Joshua Bautista and Anguano, uh, Han Henrik Schoblom from Sweden. Humudu, Henrik, <laughs> that's a little bit of the Swedish I know. Uh, quit addiction from Outer Mongolia. <laughs> I, I wonder if he's really in Outer Mongolia, but who knows, he could be. Uh, Jerry playing 50, Lord Humongous. Hi, Lord Humongous. Yeah, Billy is fast asleep. It's been a very uh, nice day here today, quite warm. So uh, yeah, Urban Sombrero, Normal Norm, Belly Dense Rabia. Hi, Belly Dense Rabia. Carol Garrity, uh, Cobro, Elias Jones. At this point, I'm interested in how to rebuild. I'm prepped for what comes next as best can be. I think the important thing right now is not to have any, uh, um, yeah, uh, exposure to uh, the fiat currency. Uh, because if you don't, if you don't have any debt, any if you don't let, yeah, if you don't have any debt, and if you haven't lent to anyone, and you have hard assets, gold and silver outside the system. And I think you're going to be okay. <laughs> um, hyperinflation collapsed. Uh, the buildup is uh, worrying and it takes years, but uh, it, it's flushed out. It happens in month, matter of months, if maybe a, a year at the most, I would say. Uh, ben Gray. Hi, Ben. Clint Cowan. Two years of deflation, then hyperinflation. I don't see any deflation, really. I think the deflation will probably come after after the hyperinflation when everything collapses, but who knows? <laughs> uh, what a show we have going to help us, Mary. Apart for the course, uh, Marcia Teixeira from Niteroi. <laughs> That's where I, I uh, grew up in Brazil. She's back there. I think she used to live here in the UK. She's still following Jim Millward. Hi, Jim. D. Anderson, the globals have destroyed the social contract. Yeah, and, and whenever that happens, you get currency collapse because uh, when you destroy the social contract, you, dis you destroy the currency because the, a currency is only as good as how credible uh, the powers that be are, uh, especially a fiat, a fiat currency, of course. Uh, a currency imposed by the by the government. Uh, Marek Kalenda, Putin after surgery, one hand is swollen, one hand holding table because shaking. <laughs> uh, Brian Bradley in New Jersey, going to Florida in one month. It's going to be hot there in Florida. Good thing they have air conditioning. Uh, Carolyn, Carolyn Wilder. Good evening uh, to the guy who has the most common sense on the internet. Thank you, Carrie, Carrie Ellen. Sorry. Uh, randomness. Hi, randomness. Ton Yaniki from North Carolina. I don't think it's that important to obtain rubles, 
I think if you have exposure to commodities, hard assets, you're indirectly uh, investing in the ruble. Uh, I think unless you're a, a mega wealthy, a billionaire uh, with uh, accounts at Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, and things like that, it's very hard to get a uh, hold of rubles. You could maybe go to uh, Russia and get some rubles there if you don't mind traveling. Got my uh, NDCB mug, uh, and it's got Christine Lagarde uh, behind bars because she was convicted in 2017. Uh, she was convicted for criminal. Yeah, she has a criminal conviction from a special court in France. Uh, at the time, she was head of the IMF, and, and they just let her, uh, they suspended the sentence. So she's uh, basically a criminal in charge of the ECB. Uh, Dave Delve Delve from Alberta, Canada. Um, LXG2. Love button says, hi, Mario. Hi, Billy. Ken Close. Uh, Kojo Osei Bando, if British pound collapses, can English shilling sixpence and crowns fill the void? Yeah, I have a lot of those. <laughs> uh, you know, I, I mark uh, my golf ball with uh, usually with a shilling, silver shilling, or even a sixpence. I'm I marked my ball today when I played golf on the green with those coins. Um, yeah, they'll come in handy. Uh, shillings, florins, half crowns, crowns. Mark, the silver shark is here. Lord Humongous. Uh, Bob Hollyoke from Rugby. John Norris is here. Sorry if I don't see all of you. There seems to be quite a few of you already. Belly Dance Arabia. John Norris says he likes the mug. Yeah. And I've got it in English, French, and German. And the ECB, Ferme la BCE. And then DSB, Herr Unterfahren. <laughs> there you go. Uh, the uh, Tim Goodson, the 50. Percent uh, sixpence. That's after uh, 1946. Yeah, uh, most of mine are pre 1920. I have a lot of sixpence. Uh, I have a lot of half crowns, shillings, a lot of florins. Some of them are numismatics. Uh, I have a 1787 shilling with King George the <laughs> Third on it. That was more of a collector's item. Yeah, the ruble was broken below 60. I, I noticed that normal norm. Yeah, I'm going I'm having a bit of coffee. I'm a bit tired. We we went to a to a, a dance yesterday last night at the golf club. My wife and, and I and four of our friends and uh we were there quite late till like almost midnight. And then I played this morning. I didn't drink though, because uh, if I had had uh, anything to drink, uh, I would have uh, not played uh, very well. But I'm, I'm tired. It was a hot day here, which is nice. Uh, John Norris says ammo is insanely expensive in Alaska, but still stocking. Stocking. Hi, Connor Monry. Uh, we've got just a minute to go. Who owns the central banks? I, I think the uh, private commercial banks, they control the, the central banks, really. And you have to look into who really owns JP Morgan and the big uh, British banks, th those are the people uh, that control uh, the central banks. And I would say it's probably uh, uh, the people that uh, uh, Stephen Birmingham talks about in Our Crowd, Our Crowd, which is a very good book. I have it here, but uh, 
haven't got it handy. I'll, I'll write it down. This was recommended by Jim Sinclair. Uh, probably a lot of most of the people that own the central banks, a lot of the people are in this book, the families at least. Uh, heck, this book is probably out of print, but you can find it. You, you find a lot of the people who own the central banks here. BR Barclays isn't having a good year. What are the chances of bankruptcy? Well, I don't think the, uh, I'm not, you know, uh, the government will probably uh, nationalize Barclays like they did RBS. They wouldn't let Barclays uh, go under, Barclays go under, I would say. Uh, Richard Spiller, yeah, I'm doing well. Uh, prediction for for gold price, I don't like to make that, you know, because it's really, really hard. The only, and it's not even prediction, the only idea that I have is that fiat currency always goes, becomes worth less and less and eventually goes to zero. And when that happens, gold has to become more valuable. Uh, it, it's tough to know um, where this gold price is going to go. But I think we could make new highs. That's all I would say before the end of the year. Uh, so the title of the uh, video, and I'll bring, I'm going to share something now with you guys. Uh, I did a little thing here uh, on my uh, computer. Uh, because we always talk about, um, you know, the, the German, uh, the Weimar hyperinflation, right? But uh, I think it's interesting to look at the history uh, uh, during and, you know, way before the what happened in Germany in the early 20s, because uh, like I said, the social contract is very important. So here we go. Uh, the name Weimar uh, comes from this uh, city uh, right in the middle of Germany called Weimar, of course. And th there's a picture of Weimar. Looks like a very beautiful place in Germany. And it says the period in Germ German history from 1919 to 1933 is commonly referred to as the Weimar Republic. As the Republic's constitution was drafted here rather than Berlin, uh, as the capital was considered too dangerous for the National Assembly to use as a meeting place because of its streets rioting after the 19, 19, 1918 German Revolution, the calm and centrally located Weimar had a suitable uh, place of assembly, the theater, hotels, and infrastructure. infrastructure. So it was chosen, not as the cat, I think they made a mistake here, it was chosen uh, for a place where they uh, joined to write the constitution for the republic. And why did they have a revolution? Well, if because Germany lost the war, well, they were losing the war, November 1918, when they lost the war. Everything was in tatters in Germany. Um, and Kaiser Wilhelm, he abdicated. I think he went into exile to the Netherlands. And uh, yeah, the German Empire collapsed. And the German Empire, as we see here, wasn't that old. It started, Germany was only unified in 1871. So it only been around for like uh, less than 50 years. And uh, World, World War I totally destroyed this, uh, you know, it, it <laughs> the social contract between the imperial uh, state of Germany and the German public collapsed. And there was uh, a lot of uh, political instability. There's a lot of crime, violence, revolutions everywhere around Germany. And, and, and uh, that's why they had to meet uh, in Weimar to draw up the constitution. Uh, it was a suitable place. This is today's map of Germany. But if you look at, uh, that was Germany back then. It was a lot bigger. So Weimar was like right in the middle there. So it was a, a convenient place. And, um, and here's the, uh, <laughs> the rise of gold, of the gold mark in terms of paper marks. So 
um, yeah, the thing that Germany did during the war, instead of uh, taxing, raising taxes to pay for the war, they printed a lot of money. They they issued a lot of debt. Uh, but, you know, if you look at up until uh, the end of 1921, middle of 21, the German, the paper mark wasn't doing that bad. It was still below a, a hundred, you know, uh, in terms of gold or the gold mark was, uh, didn't fetch more than a hundred paper marks. Uh, and it almost feels like a cup and handle here that we're seeing now in the price of gold but once it broke through there through this level here and these look at how it took off and <laughs> if you didn't have any gold uh when this started you probably wouldn't have been able to get it and that's why i think it's important to have some um so i'm gonna stop right here and uh if you guys have any questions so what happened there, I think, is that, uh, and that's why I think uh, it's important uh, to look at the political structure, what's happening now uh, in the States. <laughs> I saw that a CNN poll that only, even a CNN poll is showing that most people have a really, in America, have a really bad uh, feeling about what, where things are going with, with the current president. I, I think we are in a period where the social contract could collapse, not only in the US, but in Western Europe as well, and in the UK. And when the social contract collapses with, with the general public, all the uh, agreements like uh, to pay welfare, social security, all that collapses, the currency collapses. And I think that's very concerning. And but it's not the end of the world. I think uh, what people need to do is make sure they're not dependent on that currency, that they have uh, have no exposure to it. I know it's uh, probably impossible to be totally outside it, but uh, yeah, don't, don't think you can depend on your, uh, on your, so, you know, your, on your uh, state pension, uh, on any kind of, uh, any kind of uh, benefit that you get from the state, be it in the US, in the UK, it, it's all going to implode once the currency implodes. And, and I think uh, they've tried in the West to actually collapse the uh, social order in Russia. That's what they're trying to do. But I think it's backfiring and it could happen to us because uh, the social order, you know, the uh, the social contract collapsed with the Soviet Union collapsing in the early 90s. And we there was a lot of uh, hyper, you know, inflation in Eastern Europe and in, in Romania, in Russia. And I think that's what this is telling us. And and uh, the Weimar hyperinflation didn't come out of the blue. It came out of uh, a mixture of things like uh the collapse of the state, the German Reich, the, the loss of the war, all the debt that they took during the war, all the QE, debt monetization, and we've been doing the same. So uh, I'm going to, I've rambled on a bit here. I'm going to just going to see, uh, just ask me questions if you have any questions. Lord Humongous, this is a great name for a boat. Always wanted to name a boat. Eat the rich, lol. Big chan chan chance was 1914. Wonder which animal on the ark was the most obnoxious. Uh, one John, hello from New Mexico, everyone. Everyone, good health, best wishes. Yep. Ringo Dog, when they start putting tampon machines in boys' high school restrooms. You know it's over. Yeah. Uh, Richard Martin, Aloha Mario, smash the like button. We got 530 plus in the chat. Oh, that's good. 530. I mean, usually we get more. Hopefully we'll get, get some more. I wanted to let you guys know that um, tomorrow I'll be doing my usual uh, 
morning video, UK morning video. And it'll probably be a little earlier because I'm going out again tomorrow to play golf again. Uh, but uh, more importantly, I'm uh, for those of you, and I think for everyone, it will be interesting. I, I'm publishing a video at 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern time uh, about a really uh, interesting opportunity in the junior gold mining sector. <laughs> and uh, some people might think, why, why would you want to buy anything right now? Everything is down so much in the junior miners. Well, Warren Buffett always said, if you like something and it's cheap to buy, buy it. And I believe in it. I'm, it's not financial advice, but I think you guys will find it really in interesting. So uh, wait, <laughs> you know, check my channel. Uh, it will come out at 2 p.m. London, 9 a.m. Eastern. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's a surprise, but uh, I think it's a really interesting um, opportunity. And uh, it's kind of a informational video, so to speak. Uh, Alan Hua. Hi, Alan Hua. He's a uh, monkey. Monkey boss going to be Groundhog Day. It, it certainly seems to be uh the route that they they're trying to take us down uh i mean it would be ridiculous but uh who knows the world is like someone just said about tampons in boys restrooms in high school so the world's going mad so you never know i hope not uh alain roi belly dance ravis says miners are a great buy at the moment and I think you guys will find this company that I'm going to talk about tomorrow really interesting. Uh, the CEO is uh, a top guy, I think. He's very well known in the mining sector. And uh, yeah, make sure you uh, put that on your diary. <laughs> uh, 2 p.m. London, 9 a.m. Uh, New York. Uh, crypto FETT, Crypto FET, was there manipulated? Population of gold and silver in Weimar, similar to today. Uh, from New York City, salute and cheers to all stackers. Hi, Crypto. Uh, uh, thank you for the super chat. I'm not sure. I haven't really looked at it. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is an, I almost forgot. If you really want to, this is one of the great books about what happened during Weimar, uh, the Weimar hyperinflation. And uh, actually, Basically, the, the paper mark was trading against, uh, the way you measured it was against the dollar and the pound and the French franc, which were all go as good as gold, basically. So even during you know, the buildup of the inflation from, well, as you saw by that chart, it started uh, really picking up in 1922. But on, on the buildup, a lot of times the mark would strengthen and people would think, oh, the mark is really strong. But um, I'm not sure if there was manipulation. Maybe there was manipulation in the foreign exchange market by the Reichsbank. But uh, unfortunately, uh, I, I think this is the path we're taking right now. And if you, I'm going to bring up that chart again, because I think it's really interesting. Um, and uh, let's see here. This is where I think we are right now on this. You know, this is like just looking at the gold price, you see. Uh, after the war, you know, the gold price went almost up to probably around 80 marks. And then it dropped to like... I don't know, 10 or something. And uh, probably people thought, oh, yeah, you know, the mark is really strong now. And then it went back up to about 50 or so and then came down pretty much like what's happening today. But this looks very much like, uh, you know, the period of the last few years, especially 2017, 2018, when broke, the gold bro broke through like 1350. 1375. But the interesting thing here is that uh, when it starts taking off, 
the, the, the they've lost they lost total total control and it all happened like basically in about a year and a half so what i'm trying to say here um uh, if the market's still under control which it seemed to be here i, I think it's a great chance to uh, to stack gold and silver for that matter <sighs> Silver Wolf says, makes no sense, not even remotely, but, but cash is still the best tool for everyday life. Well, <laughs> uh, yeah, of course. I, I'm not, the thing is, yeah, in Weimar, Germany, uh, you needed like uh, mountains of cash to buy a loaf of bread. Of course, uh, the currency is always a good thing to have. What I'm trying to say here is that if you have any sort of accumulated savings, if you leave it in, in, in cash or with a bank as a, a, an entry, it will become worthless. <laughs> so that's why it's so important to have gold and silver or anything that's real or some f grains or a farm, uh, anything that is real and it's worth something has some value. Echo, echo, I think working from home is inflationary because it is harder to get people when they have more options because uh, the thing is uh, inflationary. Yeah, I mean, it, it, it's not inflationary. Maybe I don't like this um, association of... Uh, labor saying that wages created inflation because inflation is a purely monetary phenomenon I, I think what's happening now is that wages are so low in real terms for the you know the lower paid that it's not worth for them to go to work because they spend almost uh two-thirds of their income paying rent and, and and paying for transportation so they might they they might as well stay with their parents or some friends and not work. What, what's the point of working if you're not going to get paid properly? So I think that's what's happening. Pyramid coin to the moon, says Butch Michael. Cash is trash. I agree. Cash is trash. Uh, banks didn't do very well, Echo Echo. Anything financial, anything to do with insurance collapsed completely. The big manufacturing companies, maybe uh, the trading commodity companies did well, but banks and, um, and insurance companies, they didn't do well at all because, the you know, usually they hold a lot of the paper and the currency as... Uh, their assets and if that becomes worthless uh you know it's the uh, it's it's the end for them um, let's see really uh, hold on a second i think you want it to come down a little bit billy Tom Janicki, what do you think Mr. Putin will announce on June 30th? I don't know. Is he announcing something? We'll have to see. I wasn't aware that he was announcing anything. But uh, June 30th, that's in about eight days. No, sorry. 48 days or 40 days. The Gillette cast, in your opinion... Uh, not to put you on the spot, do you think I'm best off stacking private mint silver gold since lower premium or worth worth the sovereign mint? Private mint. Uh, I'm not sure. I don't know what country you're in. Um, you need to check the rules about capital gains and uh, things like that. In the UK, it's best to have uh, coins of the realm like uh, sovereigns and Britannias because there's no capital gains tax. Um, 
I don't think it really matters, though, <laughs> as long as you get gold and silver, if it's from a private or a sovereign mint. Davos this week. Yeah, I, I know <laughs> they've uh, gone to uh, uh, summer Davos now. It used to be in the winter, in the middle of the winter there. Um, I hope it's a flop. <laughs> I, I think people should keep exposing Davos. I, I wrote a, an article about it back in June 2020, exposing uh, the World Economic Forum. Uh, got a link here. Let's get it uh, from my my blog. Uh, let's get the article. It's got about 14,000 reads. I don't write too much in my blog. Uh, once in a while, I write. But, uh, you know, I, I think I was one of the first guys to expose, really. I'm not, like, being big-headed. But uh, I was quite early on. I saw that... Um, you know, there is something not right with the World Economic Forum. Uh, John Brown, how much time have we left to prepare? I, I, I think it's less than uh, two, two years, I would say. That's all I would say. You know, it, it, we're, you know, we're entering um, a period of which I think is going to be very... Uh, yeah, very, uh, how can I say, unsettled uh, everywhere around the world. I mean, even the Bank of England uh, governor said that uh, food prices uh, were going to be apocalyptically high. Um, there's an interesting article here um, that I thought I'd show you guys. Some of you have probably seen it already, but, you know, it's from Jim Rickards. But it's quite serious. Uh, you know, he says we are on the precipice. He says, I don't believe many people grasp the enormity of the global food crisis we'll be facing in the months ahead. But the world could be on the verge of a massive humanitarian crisis. Um, so I recommend you read that. It seems like he, you know, the poorer countries will be affected more, but I think we will be affected in Western Europe and the US, and that will be reflected in a lot higher prices. But unfortunately, in con continents like Africa, the Middle East, and other poorer places, people are probably going to starve to death, which is uh, not, not a very nice thing. Uh, Golden Gate. Great work. Can you see a big credit event happening? And if so, when will the ATMs and banks freeze? Um, yeah, I mean, right now it looks pretty bad. Uh, we're seeing, you know, the NASDAQ is down like almost 30% year to date. We're seeing like uh, leverage loans, which is part of the credit market, come off quite a bit. I think there's almost 2 trillion in leverage loans which people don't talk too much about. We're seeing the reverse repo sizes go up. Um, not sure whether they will close the uh, ATMs. Um, maybe the Fed uh, and the government will just print and uh, <laughs> who knows. But um, I mean, the, the fear that I have <laughs> is my usual... Uh, fee it for exp monthly expenses. And unfortunately, I have a savings account that I put uh, fee it in there to pay taxes, which is really annoying. Because when you see what governments are doing, you know, and the fact that you have to actually save money to pay them the tax, it's really, um, yeah, I have a problem with that. But unfortunately, it, uh, <laughs> if we don't don't pay the tax, uh, here in the UK, you know, you could get in trouble. So there you go. But yeah, apart from that, I uh, have uh, almost nothing in the system. Yeah, by having uh, miners and stocks in this, that's in the system. But that's why I keep it to uh, a sm 
relatively small percentage of what I have um, because I know uh, the, the system is fragile, but uh, who knows? Um, yeah, it's getting pretty bad because the Fed has only raised rates a couple of times and they haven't even started doing the quantitative tightening and everything is already unraveling pretty badly in the stock market. Can you imagine when they actually start uh, selling 95 billion or so uh, off their balance sheets every month. Uh, echo, echo, do you see reversal globalization as contributing to right? Yeah, definitely. I mean, globalization is um, what kept the fiat currency credit based system that we have going for more for 30 years for with china coming into the wto but now now it's all changing it's all it's reversing even though the world economic forum seems to think it, it could still keep going uh but yeah and and we re, we've outsourced uh especially in western europe you north america we've outsourced a lot of our manufacturing a lot of our supply chain abroad and it's now all disrupted you know, with uh, look at what's happening in China, they're going to open up, but everything is disrupted. Uh, echo, echo, one percent base rate versus nine. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, it is. He, this is in the UK. Echo Echo is pointing out that the uh, Bank of England base rate is 1%, the CPI is 9, and the RPI is 11.1. So yeah, uh, you're still borrowing money. You're still getting paid to borrow money. <laughs> you, you're borrowing money, you know, you yeah, because RPI is 11. So you're getting 10%. <laughs> you know, so it's heavily inflationary. But the Bank of England, they can't raise rates, you know, to 15% because it would uh, destroy every the whole economy. Uh, Belly Dance Raver says silver is at the top of the extras pyramid. No, I, I would say it's, uh, gold and silver are at the bottom, really, not the top. I don't even think he placed it in his pyramid. He just put gold, but I would put silver just above gold and paper money or cash just above gold and silver. Scott 49, uh, 140. Good evening. Hope you're doing good. Can I ask what is the difference between bonds that government buys from the treasury and ones that investors buy? <laughs> well, government can't buy their own bonds, right? The government, they uh, issue the bonds. Issuing bonds is like borrowing money. That's what the treasury does in the US. They issue bonds and they issue it in the primary market through an auction and investors buy that bond. Um, and then when that bond gets into the primary market, it starts trading in the secondary market. But governments, I think what you mean is the central bank. Yeah, the Federal Reserve, they, they buy the bonds from, they don't buy directly from, from the treasury because it would look too obvious that it's like that monetization. So they go into the uh, secondary market and buy, they buy from the primary dealers, uh, the primary dealers to the New York Fed, which are the major Wall Street banks, even foreign banks are primary dealers from the New York Fed. So that's, who the Fed buys it from. What to invest in as a 20-year-old? Uh, I would say invest, uh, you know, invest in yourself, you know, and uh, yeah, invest in, in your career or, you know, whatever you do. Uh, you still have a lot of time if you're a 20-year-old. But uh, yeah. You know, a lot of people forget that the, the best investment is in yourself, in your knowledge and education. So this idea that we all have to invest in the stock market, 
uh, I, I think this is like a part of the uh, scam. Linda Compton says, my dad used to get his clothes at the golf club where he played golf. Yeah, a lot of clubs have a, a pro shop um, and they sell golf, golf clothes so you can buy clothes there. Uh, okay. Lily Robin, last month I got a 1996 ASE coin at my coin club for 35. And on SD bullion, it goes now for about 95. Uh, Matt Bittner, the, the head of the uh, Reichsbank uh, was Rudolf uh, Havenstein. Yeah. He was actually a lawyer. And uh, <laughs> the thing is that Jay Powell, the head of the Fed, he's, uh, he's a lawyer as well. So there you go, Rudolf Havenstein. They, they thought, the Germans thought at the time that the more money they created, the better it was to bring inflation down, which is really it's a little bit like uh uh politicians nowadays <laughs> i think california they passed a bill to uh spend another 18 billion to to help uh, fight inflation so history repeats itself uh, i mean even joe biden saying that government doesn't create inflation and that government spending helps bring down inflation so uh yeah, I mean, there's the signs are so, so huge. And people like, you know, we're, I, I still listen to people, even in the um, alternative, who poo poo uh, people like me and Rafi who talk about hyperinflation. And I think they're going to be wrong. <laughs> they poo pooed us uh, when we talked about we're going to have inflation because of money printing. Uh, people are saying we're going to have deflation. And now they're saying we're crazy because we're seeing currency collapse. But all the ingredient, ingredients are there. We have social division. Uh, we've got wars now. We've got political instability. We got debt monetization. We got uh, have, you know food prices rising, supply chains breaking. I mean, it's all I've never seen it like this. Uh, maybe in third world countries, but those are like uh, expected, but not in the major reserve currency in Western Europe. Got some super chats. Do you think Urban Sombrero? Thank you. Uh, do you think the ruble will strengthen to such an extent that Russia will ask for payment in other commodities instead? Um, it could be. I mean, uh, recently one of their uh, ministers talked about uh, getting paid in gold uh, for the natural gas. But uh, yeah. But I'm not too uh, sure they, they're going to worry too much about the ruble being too strong because it will make uh, everything cheaper for, for them you know, to buy from other countries, the friendly countries. Dimitri, thank you for your super chat. On June 30th, 5,000 ruble per gram gold purchase is supposed to expire. Uh, I think it. they already came out a few weeks ago saying that they've uh, pulled that uh, offer already. So um, I don't think that's in effect at the moment, the 5,000 per ruble, because if it was, you know, There'd be a lot of uh, gold flowing into, you know, if it was, that would mean that, let's see, 5,000, enter 35,000, because right now we're around 58. So it's 86, enter 31.103. 
right well that would you know right now if they paid you 5000 uh, rubles per gram they would be paying almost $2700 per ounce so yeah they've stopped that uh dimitri i think they did that to help stabilize the ruble before that the ruble was around 100 and when it got below 80 they stopped it but they could announce something significant on june 30th who knows uh jump tube are you able to put money into a russian bank account no i don't think so i mean there, there were some russian banks here in london uh but uh, there are more investment banks and even those have been like shut off so you might have to travel to russia open an account there and put some money there uh i think people can still travel to russia i don't think there are any restrictions so that would be the easiest way go to russia open a bank account there maybe find out before you go if you can as a foreigner how see how difficult or easy it is oh lord humongous thinks uh, it's ted turner who uh, put up the georgia guidestones could we don't really know uh, i guess that's speculation over here says mary the nuke talk seems to have calmed down I, I think that's just scaremongering i don't think they they will use nukes personally who knows joker alpha howdy mario with quantitative tight tightening would the national debt be at risk to default um it's possible <laughs> yeah it, it is possible because that means you know because the fed is the really biggest buyer of treasuries really in the last few years and if they're going to start selling you know um People are going to want more because they know the feds, they're going to front run the feds. So they're going to start selling. Yields are going to go up. Uh, treasury uh, interest costs are going to go up for new, for new debt. And, and we're seeing that with what happened with Russia, the sanctions and the uh, freezing of their reserves. Uh, you know, a lot of countries around the world don't want to have too many dollars. And usually they hold these dollars with uh, uh, through treasury. So it is possible <laughs> uh, if things get too bad though, they, they could backtrack and start printing again to buy the bonds. Matt Bittner, it's interesting that Rudolf Havenstein died in the year 1923 when the hyperinflation ex aggressively accelerated. Yeah, I think he was under a lot of pressure and stress. Or maybe he, it was, he was, suicided <laughs> john knox real inflation in the uk is 15 percent us probably 17 i don't think they will ever admit that in the cpi i think it could go to five ten percent higher well i don't think the infl you know the number you're talking about there is not really inflation is the rising prices um the inflation has been created uh, in the last 50 years all we're getting now is the consequence of it. And I think we're going to continue to see the consequence of it, especially for things that are really necessary to survive, like food, energy, uh, anything that's valuable. Uh, Scott. Uh, yeah, I think the Weimar hyperinflation was a lot more than 42,000%. It could have been in the millions of percent. It was really crazy. Uh, I mean, people, uh, the wives used to go uh, when their husbands were at work and they got paid during the day, uh, their wives would come to get the cash to, to buy things. <laughs> Because if they waited till the next day, they couldn't buy as much. That's how bad it was.
Clinton is code for suicide. He had the Clinton body count. Echo, echo, why did it take so long for QE to feed, uh, food in, uh, feed into food prices? Well, it's like the Cantillon effect, isn't it? Uh, inflation flows to different places. It's like a river. It goes into different uh, places at different times. You know, if we look again at that um, chart of the gold mark, <laughs> Uh, during the uh, Weimar hyperinflation, you know, the war started over here, like in uh, 1914, and they did a lot of money printing to, to finance the war, but the inflation only started like, you know, after the war, and it really only picked up like eight years after the war started in 1922. War started in 1914. So, you know, uh, the big uh, QE started after the 08 crisis. And uh, it's taken about 13 years. In Germany, it took about eight years. So that's how it goes. The Gillette cast got a good book to to read on the fat cats removing silver from the dollar after the USA Civil War? Oh, is that a question? No, I, I mean, there's a, a really good book, and I interviewed the uh, author. It's called, uh, it's by William Silber, which means silver in Germany. Uh, yeah, I've interviewed him, William William Silber. Silber. Yeah, check this author and he's what's the name of the book again? Some on the shelf here. Let's see. Silber. Uh silver book. Oh yeah, the story of silver. Uh, I recommend the book. Yeah. Uh, Billy, he was a bit hot on the sofa because it's warm and uh, he wanted to go on the floor. IB Crypto, what do you think of Catherine Austin Fitz? Would love to see you and her discuss. Yeah, I, I think she's, um, she's, uh, I mean, she's got a lot of principle uh, because she was part of the, I mean, she even worked with um, Jay Powell at Dylan Reed, I think. So and she worked for the Bush, Bush uh, the elder administration. But she saw how corrupt it is and she got out of it and uh, she lost a lot from it. So she uh, she's interesting. I mean, I think I have sent maybe uh, try to contact her to come on the channel. I haven't got anything back, but maybe it's someone that I should maybe contact um, and have on the channel. I'd definitely like to speak to her. Does the book When Money Dies mention the Weimar currency being referred to as confetti? I, I, Matt, I don't remember, you know, if they use the word confetti in the book. They probably do, maybe. Uh, Jason Warner. Yeah, I do own miners. I have, you know, the major miners like Newmont, uh, Barrick. But I've also got the silver, junior silver miners, which they haven't been doing well. And uh, I actually mentioned in the beginning of this uh, live stream that tomorrow I'm publishing a, 
a video. It's an informational video about a really interesting uh, junior gold uh, mining exploration prospect. And uh, yeah, it's coming out at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern time. And uh, I'm not going to say any more about it, but it, it's a really interesting prospect. Yes, the junior miners like this company I'm going to talk about, they're down a lot from the highs in 2020, but that's when you want to buy. Uh, the, uh, I don't think the story has changed for, for gold and silver and for commodities. So it's like Warren Buffett says, if there's a company that you like and it's cheap, you should buy it. It's Of course, it's not investment advice. It's only my opinion. But uh, yeah, it's not going to be a long video. It's about 10 minutes. But uh, and the CEO there is a really interesting guy. He's done well in other sectors. So he's got the track record. So there you go. Inner Dinosaur says Napoleon responsible for 3 million Frenchmen. Mao, 60. Yeah, I mean, it's like... Uh, it's big business though, war. <laughs> the, 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 the very wealthy make a lot of, make huge fortunes, but the general public pay, pay for it um, through dying, which is really a shame. <laughs> and nothing ever changes. Uh, Matt Bittner, <laughs> what's your favorite coffee brand? Uh, I drink Nescafe. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, so I don't I don't drink uh, real coffee. <laughs> uh, my wife always she's English. She finds it funny that as a Brazilian, I, I drink Nescafe because it's so easy to make. So I'm not too fussed. <laughs> Uh, Grandy says my VIX calls and SBY puts are printing good. Did you see how low first majestic went? Yeah, <laughs> I have seen. I mean, unfortunately, I bought some, <laughs> some more just before it dropped a lot. But uh, I'll probably be buying some more, hopefully, this week, some more miners. Uh, because I, I I get some income at this time of the month. Your mom, your mom's wife. Hi, your mom's wife. Uh, Paul from Eugene says, you and Mike are on at the same time. Well, I guess you mean Mike, uh, rethinking the dollar is on right now. Well, I, I, I've been, I usually do it at nine o'clock London. I've been doing it for probably about three years. So, but, I, you know, Mike does what he wants. Uh, drop the drawback. Mario and Catherine Nelson Fitz would be great. Her plan and lockdown interview. I also interviewed um, a guy that she works with. Uh, uh, I've interviewed him a few times. What's his name? Best, the, his channel is Best Evidence, YouTube channel. He doesn't make too many videos, but he's really good. Uh, the guy from Best Evidence. Over here, Mario, I remember a couple of years ago hearing that people in Lebanon were desperate to buy anything not to hold their currency. I heard cases of rubber bands. Yeah, I mean, I interviewed a guy from Lebanon. Um, I think it was late last year. And he said, uh, you know, there is no currency when there's a hyperinflationary collapse. Uh, there's no currency uh, going around. Um, Unless you have dollars, you can't really buy anything. It's really tough. So, I mean, when the dollar and the, all the major currencies go, I think having some silver is going to be really useful.
what do you think about tobacco stocks, British American? Yeah, I mean, if you if you if you don't have a problem with uh, buying that kind of stock, yeah, they they they're like defensive, you know, and they provide a dividend, I would say. And people are going to keep smoking, probably even more. They're going to be more stressed out. Alan Hua can gold go to 900 before it goes to 3000. Anything's possible. Uh, if gold went to 900, uh, you know, probably the Dow would be down at uh, 12,000. So uh, if gold went to 900, I think it, uh, the whole of the uh, stock and bond market would have dropped even more. So in real, uh, but I personally don't think that's going to happen. I guess you're probably thinking about Harry Dent, but uh, I think gold, uh, yeah, gold is up about 2% year to date, looking at the close on Friday. So gold is beating the US dollar and all the other currencies, of course, because the dollar is beating the other currencies. Uh, Scott 49140, is it true that during times of currency crisis, silver outperforms gold? Yeah, it does. But during, yeah, like uh, I think Rafi made a, a video about that today. And I recommend that video. I think I've got it here because I was going to tell you guys to watch it. And I'll give you the link. Um, yeah, like I think it was 19, 18, 1919, uh, 1968, and 1980. So, you know, when the dollar was in, in trouble, silver outperformed. During the hyperinflation, though, like uh, Weimar, gold outperformed because silver is too bulky. But silver did well as well. But gold did better than silver in the hyperinflation. Uh, Lord Humongous, <clears throat> do you, <clears throat> excuse me, do you think Michael Saylor is crying at the Bitcoin price? To be honest, I don't really uh, care much for Michael Saylor and what's happening to him. I just know that I think uh, he was very irresponsible, uh, you know, by the comments he made. Um about a year ago for people to basically sell their own mother to to buy you know bitcoin so the guy you know i don't want to waste my, my time thinking about him uh matt bittner british american tobacco stock eight percent dividend yeah there there's some good dividend paying stocks out there Alan Zibelman stacks whiskey. Cuban cigars are probably a good stack. Uh, I checked my, uh, you know, this is a Rolex Explorer 2. I bought it in 2003 and it cost uh, just over 2,000 pounds. And I checked the price on watchfinder.co.uk a, a few months ago, beginning of the year. A second hand of these was 7,000 pounds. And now it's up to almost 10. <laughs> so it just goes to show uh, anything that's uh, valuable or perceives to be a luxury good or is in short supply, uh, you know, it doesn't really go up. It's the currency that is going down. I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to sell my watch to get the pounds unless I really need it. Uh, Matt Bittner, yeah, I do have Mercury Dimes. They're similar to the Sixpence in the UK, pre-1920 Sixpence. They're really great little coins. Fifty-five Skongi fifty-five. I pick up a lot of gold dust from you. Keep up the good work. Oh, you're welcome. Romeo and Juliet cigars. 
Yeah, I've got Monte Cristo uh, is good. Cohiba. They're not cheap. They've gone up a lot. Lily Robbins says they rob people in California for their watches. The thing is, in England, you know, except in the summer, and, and it's rare, it's not very warm. And I usually wear a long sleeve, like a uh, jumper or a sweater, or so I always keep my wa watch hidden. I know what you mean, though. In you know, even here, though, you have to be careful. Uh, over here, Mary, wouldn't tobacco stocks getting negative ESG rating? I, I think ESG is going out the window. It, it's going to be a big failure. We saw that BlackRock is, turn you know, making a U-turn in terms of ESG. Uh, so, yeah. I, I don't see it. And uh, in the UK and a lot of other countries, tobacco and, and cigarettes, and I'm not telling people should smoke, but it's, it is what it is, uh, provides a lot of revenues for the uh, tax man, especially here in the UK. Amir Khan had his rolex stolen last month i don't really i'm not sure i know who amir khan is but anyway yeah uh, lily robin like in brazil you know the last time i was there was in 2015 i don't even think i took my my uh, Rolex, I, I wore a Swatch watch because in Brazil, it's really bad if you walk around with a watch like this. Brady Girding thinks Elon Musk is a CIA stooge. You never know. <laughs> Anything's possible. Monty Python, uh, I don't think it's popular anymore in England. It used to be. And I think it's not politi politically correct anymore. <laughs> so we got a couple of minutes to go. I think I shared everything I wanted to. Exxon is on the ESG stock list. <laughs> That's ironic. Jeff McCarthy, wear fake jewelry. How did the golf go this week? Uh, I played today. Uh, I wasn't really hitting the ball very well, but uh, I kept it going. I shot 78, which isn't bad, but I didn't really, my rhythm wasn't there, but uh, I actually chipped in on one hole, which was nice for a birdie. I haven't chipped in for a while, so it was nice. I'm playing tomorrow again. Uh, I usually don't play on the Monday, but uh, in the UK, we have what's called golf societies. Uh, we have two at my club, and I'm the captain of one of them. And so we're going uh, away uh, to play another course tomorrow. My favorite coin, AJ. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, there. I like loads of different coins. Silver coin, I would say, is probably the florin and the shilling. I like them. I like the Kennedy half dollars. Um, gold, I, I like the uh, buffalo, the one ounce gold buffalo. I like the uh, the you know the pre the uh, twenty dollar gold pieces are really nice. I think as well.
uh, the Gillette cast. This is great covering of topics. Oh, I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad. I'm glad that that's good. Uh, in the dinosaur. Thanks, Myra. Billy Bulling, great show. He li you live one street away from Royal Blackheath. Yeah, I, I played Royal Black Blackheath a few times in the last few years. Um, they put a lot of bunkers in that course. It's the oldest golf club in England, Royal Blackheath. But it's an Eltham. <laughs> Sunshine Mint. I, I think I have some Sunshine Mint um, bars. Not sure if I have a coin. Yeah, I, I bought them when they came out, Silver Wolf. I've got some 07 and 08 uh, gold buffaloes. At the time, you could still buy stuff from the the, the U.S. Mint uh, from abroad. But then uh, I think after the uh, 08 crisis, they stopped foreigners from being able to, to buy, well, people from abroad buying from the U.S. Mint. So... Okay, so yeah, we've gone on for over an hour. Uh, just to remind you guys, uh, keep an eye on my uh, video tomorrow about the uh, mining uh, gold silver gold mining uh, junior exploration opportunity. I think you will like that, and uh, I think it's a great time to be adding on. I know it's a volatile market, and I have to stress that it's speculative. But if you believe in the gold story and the inflation story, currency story, uh, I think it's a good speculation. Uh, but I'm not telling you to do it. I'm just going to give you the uh, information. Uh, Miles, Miles, thank you. No foreign, no problem. We at the World Economic Forum recommend cockroach milk. <laughs> yeah, I guess we're all own nothing and be happy right so with that i'll uh i'll bid you farewell everyone and uh, i'll talk to you tomorrow <laughs>